So yeah, I mean, this is like every category of vintage you could ever imagine. Hoodies, button-ups, denim shorts, flannels, holy shit, you name it, they got it. Catch the swell, homie. Ah. Really? Damn, this is a really dope Snoopy. Are those Nike? Yeah. Grab those, I like those. Honestly, a brand could not pay for that good of a look. I love this. I think it's got a great look. It's really good. It's sequins and tassels. 90s, I don't know. This is this might have been a vibe. It's not like everyone thinks where you can just come through and you're like, all right, got a bunch of really great polo and Tommy, let's go and pay for it and I'm done. It's like, no, actually, like this is all a bunch of bullshit. Sean Wotherspoon and his business partners spend hours at rag houses like this one, digging for old clothes. They're sourcing product for their world-famous vintage streetwear company, Round Two. Cameras aren't usually welcome here, but we got a rare invitation to a treasure hunt for t-shirts your dad might have worn. Wow. Heater. Is it? Heat. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just, picked, a a, you just picked like a, oh, you know, a couple hundred dollars It's Madonna. Shirt. It's a Madonna tour yeah. shirt. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. huge. From that's when? That's a good one. That's this fire. One? This really one's nice. what? This one's uh, too stretched This out. is 1990. But yeah, I mean, this is between, you know, like what, 150 and two or something like that? Even Easy. though it's got yeah. like stain. Yeah, this is fine. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is like, in our vintage store, it's like, this is just like kind of what people want. Knowing exactly which qualities makes an old t-shirt valuable requires experience and instinct. This is also it's like, not uh, cheap you know, or easy either. To even walk into this rag house, you have to be ready to spend all day here and drop a minimum of $500. Oh, yeah, Do you want to price this out, I guess? Yep. Cool. Yep. Yep. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. We got these uh, sweatshirts here at 18 inch. Cool. $30. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. very fair, right? 25 yeah. 25 yeah. Sounds great. T-shirt for 25 you know what I mean? Whatever you think is. 50 on the Madonna. OK. And, uh, Today, they left with $2,000 worth of what might seem like a random assortment of old tees but they're confident they'll make at least a 30% profit on each one. Thank you, brother. I'm stoked, yo. Thank, Thank you, you, man. Thank, Thank you. Man. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you for your business. Thank you for your business, guys. Yeah. Sean and the guys can anoint a t-shirt with value because they've been getting their hands dirty this way for a decade. The first round two store was a 10 by 10 square foot storage unit in Richmond, Virginia. When they first got into vintage, it was just to find rare clothes for themselves. They soon realized they could turn their own personal taste into cash. Next, they opened a 700 square foot brick and mortar. And since then, the brand has expanded a lot. This is kind of like the round two block, right? It's sweet, yeah, yeah, it's our little monopoly. It's our village, the round two village, yeah. Usually people come to the main store first, then they'll go hit up the vintage store, then they'll go to the merch store last, grab some like souvenirs and some merchandise like that. It's a cool block, you know? It's a lot of fun. So how many stores do you have now? Um, okay, so... <laughs> you don't even know. We have three here. One in New York, but we're opening another one in New York in March, so I won't count it yet. Um, two in South Beach, one in Virginia, seven. Yeah. And how many people do you employ now? I don't do payroll. I don't know. We might have like 50 employees, though. It's a little crazy. At a time when the retail apocalypse is causing apparel stores to close at record rates, Sean is opening more without a functioning website. The brick and mortar stores are dying. Yeah. Everything's going online. How do you think you've been able to go against the I could not feel the, the opposite. Yeah. Like you're saying that and in my mind, I'm like, is this true? Is this really happening? I just don't believe it. I feel like if your brick and mortar is dying, you suck. I think now, consumers love to have a story, they love to have something to talk about, love to feel like a part of something. When you go to a store to shop, you leave with like 10 stories. What they are selling online is the in-store experience via YouTube. Welcome to the new store. Customers find out about the store from the show, which is basically pawn stars for rare Supreme, Nike, and of course, vintage. They've been filming themselves for six years now, and the hour-long episodes have an impressive average watch time of 15 minutes. It's this, along with the brand's combined 1.6 million Instagram followers, that's created the hype to sustain the storefronts. Hype that has kids flying in from all across the globe. 
I flew all the way from Sydney, Australia, and he had time, like five minutes of his time, to have a chat with me. Like, it's crazy. Did you feel like you kind of know him because you've been following him online? I honestly felt like I was talking to a celebrity. And Where uh, are you from? I'm from Mexico. Why are you shopping in round two? Oh, well, round two seems very special to me because it captures that vintage feeling very well. It's just such a good feeling that you don't get at a regular retail clothes. I feel like these things have a history behind them, and that's good. People do well who are in this kind of niche area of the kind of vintage yeah. market. What do you think of the elements that took it beyond that? We opened in 2013, so that was like, there wasn't many stores like ours, and the stores you could go to that were, you know, ran by younger dudes, everyone was an asshole. So we saw that and we were like, you know what, when we open, let's just like be as nice as possible. You have worn these shoes better than any other human on planet Earth. This is what I thought they would look like in 20 years. I love it. Can I take a picture of them, actually? Dude, I'm so hyped. You killed it. Yo, what's your IG? Sean's now a full-blown influencer. Last year, Nike chose him to design his own sneaker, which instantly sold out. And there's another one on the way with Guess. It's vegan. So sick. I wish I had a clean pair like this, honestly. That's supposed to be a swoosh mouth. <laughs> thank you. I love it. Thank you Appreciate so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. How's business? Yearly? Uh, for like, I don't know, just like a random number to throw out there. We'll probably do like upwards of like 10 million a year. Turns out the number is closer to 20 million. Sean's easygoing disposition can make it seem like this was all a happy accident. But new storefronts are coming in Chicago, Houston, and internationally. And there are conversations happening about their YouTube show moving to a bigger platform. You're going to be recycling a hell of a lot of Yeah, <laughs> old we're recycling clothes. a lot of clothes. <laughs> we're selling a lot of used clothes. 